Hello, welcome back to episode 17 of my Final Fantasy VII Let's Play. We're here in uh, Cloud Storytelling Time, back at Nibelheim. Uh, you know what? You're gonna have to like keep up and watch uh, with everything. I, I've been doing a little bit of a recap with every episode, but it's getting a bit too long because there's so much fucking going on. So I, I'm just gonna have to assume at every point that, or assume at this point that everybody who's watching uh, knows what the fuck's going on because they've watched the previous episodes. So, so it's just gonna be like that. Um, but I will say for anybody who wants to watch this podcast and maybe just jumped in on this episode randomly for whatever reason and might want to go back. Just fair warning, uh, this is not my first time playing the game, and I will at certain points reference um, future episodes, or future events in the game. If I notice some kind of um, like foreshadowing or something that I didn't notice on my other playthroughs of this game, because this game is very deep and layered, and uh, you, you kind of notice new things every time, so there will be spoilers throughout this podcast. Not tons, but they will be there. Um, okay, so they're at the, the Mako reactor. We're going to go take out the monsters. Tifa, you wait here. And we see all the mist around, because these are the misty mountains brimming with Mako. I'm going inside, too. I want to see. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, that cloud's thinking the same thing as me. Only authorized people are allowed in. This place is full of Shinra's industrial secrets. But take care of the lady. Tifa's pissed. Man! Huh. Better take real good care of me then. Huh. Kind of, oh. There's uh, Sephiroth climbing down a ladder over there, getting ahead of me. Oh shit, look at this. Look at the fucking beautiful drawing here. Look at the lighting, the shadows on these pipes and stuff. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's it kind of bad vibes that um, Tifa's dad asked me to watch over her, and I'm not with her right now. Cause, but I mean, Cloud's on a mission. He's kind of torn in multiple directions. But Cloud's also very young and green right now, and he doesn't necessarily like he wanted to keep Tifa away from the danger. And really, he thinks he's protecting Tifa by not letting her in here. So I guess in a way, he, in his mind, he is doing the right thing. But uh, he's also green, he doesn't know just how things go in life sometimes. Look at those fucking gears turning. This is a 1997 video game. Look at that, the lighting, the shadows, it's all pre-rendered, but it looks fucking amazing. PS1. Grasp that, we're on PS5 now, this is PS1. That was, I, I can't believe how good those gears looked. Okay, so this kind of looks like the same as uh, the little thing that Genova was stored in. Let's go check out what's going on. Okay, we can't look inside of them. But yeah, it looks like the same kind of storage chamber that Genova was stored in. Alright. Oh my god, it says Genova. Both places, on the pipe and then on the label up above the door. God damn. I mean, you, I already know that intense shit goes down at this place because I've played the game before, but you can just tell just by looking at this place something intense is going to go down here, probably. This is Genova, right? It won't open. Genova, being that weird creature with no head and big tits, and also Sephiroth's mother. That's all we know about her so far. Cloud must be thinking, like, what the? What is your mother doing here in this weird power plant? What the hell? Why is her name on everything? This is the reason for the malfunction. This part is broken. Cloud, close the valve. 
Did you close the valve? Let's let's close the valve. Let's check up here first, though. Is that the valve? No. <laughs> Sephiroth's like, get down here and close the fucking valve. Valve closed, sir. Why did it break? I guess that's Sephiroth kind of talking to himself. Like, why did it break? Even Sephiroth, tall-ass Sephiroth, has to jump up to look in inside of the window. Now I see Hojo. So it seems like Sephiroth knows Hojo, and what does he think of Hojo? But doing this will never put you on the same level as Professor Gast. Okay, so Professor Gast is someone we heard about in the Shinra library. Can't remember. I think he was doing some kind of biological research. So Hojo took o is an inexperienced scientist who took over the work of a greater scientist, who, who apparently was Professor Gast. And Sephiroth's kind of saying to himself, like, "Damn, so this is what you're up to." Well, I don't know why you're bothering. You're not going to be, you're not going to be able to do this on the level of Professor Gast. You're kind of, uh, you, you should just stay in your own lane. This is kind of above your pay grade, Hojo. This is a system that condenses and freezes the Mako energy. That is, when it's working correctly. Oh, so that's how they extract uh, power from Mako. And I'm feeling better and less yawny, by, by the way, now that I'm drinking some damn good 7-Up. wonder what 7-Up's seven, seven made of, out of. Maybe you freeze and condense the Mako energy and some lemons and limes, and that somehow turns into 7-Up. <laughs> so condensing and freezing Mako energy that's what allows you to store it and transport it I suppose now what does Mako energy become when it's further condensed I know materia <laughs> look at cloud he said it almost in like the green way that I just said it he looked up at the ceiling uh, um, oh yeah it becomes materia no, I, I'm, I'm making fun of Cloud a little bit. He's he's still a smart kid, even if he is green here. Right, normally. And Sephiroth is kind of like an older brother figure to him. Sephiroth doesn't seem that evil right now. He's just, uh... Well, other than leaving behind that one soldier. He's, he's very focused and on mission, I'll say that. So, there's something off about him. I guess he doesn't seem totally wholesome either. But Hojo put something else in there. Take a look. Look through the window. What are we gonna see? Whoa! Shit! What is that? Normal members of Soldier are humans that have been showered with Mako. Like me and you, right? You're different from the others, but still human. Wait, what? I'm different from the others? You mean different from normal soldiers, or different from even other soldier soldiers? Like I'm a special elite? Like I'm an elite elite? Was that what you're saying? But what are they? They've been exposed to a far higher degree of Mako than you. Okay, so you're saying I'm different from a, just a regular human because I've been exposed to some Mako. But that monster was exposed to too much Mako. It's like I was saying, like the, the reports of the monsters, you know, going crazy. Uh, the, what did they say? Brutal monsters attacking around uh, the Nibelheim, the old Nibelheim Mako reactor. I was saying maybe it's because of the Mako. Seems like that was the case. Seems like maybe old Hojo was a little bit too ambitious over here. And he was uh, probably thinking that he could make an even more powerful soldier or a more powerful monster by exposing them to a uh, far higher, quote-unquote, far higher degree of Mako. Is this some kind of monster? Exactly. 
and it's Hojo of Shinra that produced these monsters. So is this... See, th this is a, a theme throughout the Final Fantasy games. A lot of the time, there's some kind of explanation produced for why there are so many monsters in the world. Why, when you're just running around on the world map, you're constantly being attacked by monsters. Um, and a lot of the time, the explanation is some kind of either unworld, otherworldly force, some kind of interdimensional force, or some kind of... Like this, like, too much Mako exposure. This makes me think back to Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, which was originally on the GameCube. I think you can get it basically on all modern consoles now, but that game had to do with, like, a mist. Like a deadly mist. Mako's not a mist, but it is in higher quantity here at the, the misty Mount Nibble. Mutated living organisms produced by Mako energy. That's what these monsters really are. So they used to be human or other animals. They were exposed to too much Mako. Such an interesting dichotomy that this life force, it's literally the life energy of the planet. And it's obviously what powers, you know, it's what's within human and animal and plant life on the planet it, it, it's the the life source but if you get too high of a dose of it it's almost like you evolve too quickly for your body to handle and you just become a monster you're just like a mutant normal members of soldier you mean you're different whoa Oh yeah, Sephiroth's tripping out. Hey, Sephiroth! No. Was I? Oh shit, Sep- Oh god! Oh shit! Sephiroth's tripping out, he's angry as hell. This is just like Mewtwo. Sephiroth is so much like Mewtwo. Was I created this way too? God damn, so we're- This is five years ago, we're here for Sephiroth having this revelation that he probably was created through this process of, like, hyper Mako exposure. Forgot about that. Ugh! God damn, I'm, like, reacting like he's hitting me with that thing. Am I the same as all these monsters? Sephiroth. Cloud's trying to be a good younger brother figure. Calm him down. God damn! He's just smashing shit. You saw it. All of them were humans. Sephiroth is no longer in his leader mentality. He's talking to Cloud like an e like an equal. Like Cloud is or Sephiroth is out of his leaderly frame. Human? No way. Oh, that's <laughs> Cloud's so young he doesn't understand. That's low-key insulting. If Sephiroth is assuming that he's one of these beings that's been exposed to too much Mako, I guess technically he's uh I guess technically he's the, the successful experiment. He's the Mewtwo. He's the one that survived the, the cloning process. He's the one that survived the Mako experimentation. Hyper Mako exposure process. But if Cloud is saying, human? No way! Like implying that they're a bunch of disgusting looking monsters? <laughs> then he's kind of implying that Sephiroth is also perhaps a monster. Oh, Sephiroth's getting even more, like, tripped out and into, like, this trance of, uh, of realization. Ever since I was small, I felt that I was different from the others. Special in some way. Oh, he's maybe getting a god complex. Like, he's realizing I'm the one who survived these experiments. That's so fucking crazy to think about. Hojo was e exposing all kinds of humans to too much Mako. Like, way more Mako than was the normal amount that a normal human could normally survive. That pro Probably the amount that they expose a human to to turn them into a, a, a soldier, all capital soldier. You know, it's just like a certain amount and then he's exposing them to like way more that's known to be like catastrophic and turns them into monsters. But Sephiroth is the one that basically makes good on Hojo's uh, desire to create an even more elite super soldier. But not like this, so Sephiroth doesn't like it. Even if he sees, like, 
I am the set successful ultra Mako experiment. It's like, not like this. He doesn't like it. He doesn't want it to be this way. He doesn't like the whole thing, even if he was successful. Oh god, that's... Oh, look at it. It's a tortured being. That's fucking terrible. Am I human? I didn't really understand what Sephiroth meant then. I was even more surprised that Shinra, Shinra was producing monsters. So Cloud is even questioning his own humanity because he's been exposed to Mako. Damn, Shinra. The more I hear, the more I hate him. Who would have ever thought the Mako reactor held such a secret? Oh, so is this not when Tifa's dad dies? Because Tifa didn't know this detail? Or even if it was the memory when Tifa's dad dies, maybe, um... Maybe Cloud just never told her this part. Maybe they never got a chance to talk about it. That would seem to explain the increase in the number of monsters recently. I think we should listen carefully to Cloud. Don't you think so, Barrett? So there's more and more monsters because Shinra is getting more and more powerful and doing more and more experiments. Oh shit, here's the save point. Why are you talking to me? Oh, because Barrett interrupted the story. Uh, let's. I, I'm afraid if I go to save game and rest that we won't get the rest of the story. So let's just keep talking. Hmm. Poking his damn nose in where it don't belong. Cloud, why don't you finish that story? That's funny. <laughs> Barrett's, Barrett's pointing the finger at Red 13 for poking his nose in and saying something to Barrett. Meanwhile, Barrett's the one poking his nose in on Cloud's business. Pretty funny. All right. Whew. <laughs> Red 13 has no desire to like sit around and argue. He's just like wise old lion. Just glad that Barrett's calmed down. Tifa, were you waiting outside then? Yes. We returned to Nibelheim. Sephiroth confined himself to the inn. He didn't even try to talk to me. Then all of a sudden he just disappeared, right? We found him inside the biggest building in Nibelheim. The mansion. The villagers used to call it the Shinra Mansion. Long ago, people from Shinra used to live in that mansion. So it's really not a mansion, it's probably more of a... a lab? Or maybe just like an administrative building for some Shinra local leaders to live in, I suppose it could be. Okay, so this is the next day, maybe? We got the picture guy there, we got the hero Zangin there, or the martial artist rather. We got the, I guess the soldier that survived, we got Tifa, and we got Tifa's father. Fuck, rest in peace to the other fucking soldier. talk to everybody. Oh. What's Sephiroth doing? Until we know that there's no danger, we're not moving. There's nothing that'll harm the town, right? Hmm. Why do you ask? Huh. <laughs> the Shimmer showed up to eliminate any information that could be embarrassing to the company. Because they won the war. Yeah, they're here doing cleanup after the war. Sangin's worried. You pick up these things when you travel as much as I do. Yeah, Zangin's wise, wise old guy. It's Sephiroth. He would never do that. Oh, Cloud still believes in Sephiroth. Oh my, you sure do have faith. Yeah. Where's Tifa, though? Alright, let's go. This is a big old mansion. There's actually a lot of stuff you can do in here eventually, but not right away. 
believe Sephiroth's downstairs, so let me check the upstairs parts first. Okay, we got Mr. Mr. Blue up in here. There's no sign of Sephiroth, but I know I saw him go into this room. Oh, really? Oh, shit. So Sephiroth's got the power of teleportation. Oh, there's the spiral staircase. See, just like the spiral staircase we had to go up to get up the pillar, and just like the spiral staircase we had to go up to get up the Shinra building, now we're going down a spiral staircase. First we were going up, up, up in Midgar, rising up in the world, heading up towards the top of the mountains. But Sephiroth chopped off the head of the mountain. Midgar president. And now Sephiroth is going down, down, down. Well, back in the past, which kind of makes it even more interesting. We're going deep, digging deep down into the past. Okay. Well, I will check out that spiral staircase, but let me check out the rest of the mansion. figured I would get from to the downstairs from here, but I guess you get to the downstairs from the upstairs. Can't even get in that room. Looks like it's like a storage room that's kind of, the door is blocked off by bullshit. Yeah, this is just kind of like decrepit. Nothing really in here. I guess Shinra doesn't use it anymore. Nobody uses it. It's a little bit abandoned. Fairly opulent though. Look at that. That's like nice looking. Quite nice looking. Piano. Right. And this piano might relate to Tifa's piano in terms of the, the quest related to it later. Or side quest or something. Okay, so let's go. Let's go down, down, down. This area reminds me of uh, spoilers from Final Fantasy VIII, but uh, the castle at the end of the game a little bit. Very, um, almost gothic. Ooh. Purple tunnel. What does this area remind me of? This purple tunnel reminded me of somewhere for a minute there. I can't remember where. Maybe another area from Final... Oh, it might have been an area from Chrono Cross. Okay. Yeah, so I can't get up in there. That, in the future, I believe, is where I go to recruit uh, Vincent. The, uh, the second optional character, aside from Yuffie. I think technically I could have already gone and recruited Yuffie, but I will be recruiting her soon after this memory. So here we are in some kind of cool little library laboratory. This, this fucking room is badass. An apparently dead organism was found in a 2,000 year old geological stratum. Geological stratum is uh, like a layer. So like a layer of the rock underneath the ground. An apparently dead organism was found 2,000 years ago underneath the earth. Professor Gast named that organism Genova. Gast, I mean, Geist is the German word for ghost. So, and that even, like, relates, it comes from the same root word as, like, aghast. So maybe it's something to do with that, the way they named him. There's usually reasons for all the names. Like, yeah, Sephiroth being named after the Tree of Life and him being this super organism, it all kind of fits together. Genova is like Jehovah or Yahweh. X year, X month, X day. So they're just showing that this is a journal entry, but they didn't bother to date it. Genova confirmed to be an ancient. Or it's probably dated in the book, but Sephiroth just isn't reading it, or they're just not giving you that data, because doesn't matter they're not creating like a an actual timeline of history just 2,000 years ago Genova or no the beings 2,000 years old but this who knows when this discovery happened Genova confirmed to be an ancient 
So, okay. Hold on. Yeah, Sephiroth is an ancient. Jenova is Sephiroth's mother. Okay, so, okay, so Jenova then, according to what I'm seeing... Genova must be part of the bloodline. I, I guess it's a bloodline. Uh, or a family tree. The heiress is part of. So heiress, her mother Afalna, and then way back, 2,000 years ago, Genova. X year, X month, X day. Genova project approved. The use of Mako Reactor 1 approved for use. What's the Genova project? Is that going to be this? Oh no, this is uh, Dr. Gast, not Hojo. So maybe Gast was the original one to try and Oh, maybe the idea what originally wasn't using Mako to create super soldiers, but they just found this ancient being that was an ancient and that they probably had heard the legends of the ancients and and the promised land and ancients are probably so rare to come across that they were like, oh my god, a 2,000 year old ancient. Let's see what happens if we shower it with Mako, maybe. Sephiroth's obsessively reading. That's a cool shot of that hallway. He looks up at the sky like he's thinking, like, oh, like he's having a revelation. My mother's name is Genova. Genova Project. Is this just a coincidence? Professor Gast, why didn't you tell me anything? Why did you die? Is Gast his father? Try and click on things to get any more context clues before I talk to Sephiroth. What a cool dramatic shot that is. Let me be alone. Uh oh. Let me be alone. That's it, eh? Maybe we do just let him be alone right now. Sephiroth didn't come out of the Shinra mansion. Oh yeah, time lapse. He's just like here, there, and everywhere. Reading, reading, reading obsessively. Having more revelations. Getting tired from all of it, but just pressing on. He continued to read as if he were possessed by something. And not once did he come out of the basement. I think that's what it said. Clouds sleeping in Shinra Mansion. Let's try and go back down to where Buddy was. Sephiroth seems different. What do you mean? I'm your ally, so has Sephiroth gone insane? Traitor? You ignorant traitor, I'll tell you. This planet originally belonged to the Cetra. Cetra was an itinerant race. They would mi oh, they would migrate in, settle the planet, then move on. So they're like the Anunnaki. 
They just came here to settle the planet, then move on. So it's like they go around maybe introducing a little bit of new DNA or a little bit of new wisdom or new development to a planet, and then they move on to the next planet, and they just go around the stars doing that. Interesting. At the end of their hard, long journey, it was said they would find the promised land and supreme happiness. So this Cetra race, they have they have their own kind of almost religious belief that their destiny is to go around the stars helping other planets and species to develop little by little, and that at the end of their journey they would find the promised land. So I guess the promised land isn't exclusively related to this planet. But those who disliked journeying appeared. They stopped their migrations, built shelters, and elected to lead an easier life. Okay, so there was a rift among the Cetra, some who got sick of journeying. That seems like a bad idea. It's like, uh, it's almost like God gives your species a fucking mission, and then some of you get tired of doing it. That seems like a recipe for disaster. Even if it seems too hard to do the journeying, if that really is your destiny, you probably should keep doing it. But they wanted an easier life. But they don't know why that may not be good for their destiny. They took that which the Cetra and the planet had made without giving back one wit in return. So he's talking about these these ones as if they're not part of the Cetra, but I guess he's just saying that because he's so disgusted with them that they stopped uh, they stopped the Cetra mission. They split off from it. So he's saying, like, yeah, their destiny is to contribute in this way, journeying around the stars, but they didn't want to do that. So they they took, as in they settled themselves, they, you know, fed themselves, did whatever, but they weren't kind of like them journeying around the stars and completing their mission was like their payment. It, or it was like the work that they had to do in order to receive the payment of the bounty of their life. Those are your ancestors. Oh. So the quote unquote normal humans that aren't ancients are the ones that wanted to just settle and wanted to quit the journey across the stars. Damn. That's why I'm a traitor to him. Well, let's face it. You or I never really fucking had anything to do with this. Like, it's not my fault what my ancestors chose to do thousands of years ago, and you don't really get to take credit for what your ancestors did thousands of years ago. I mean, maybe... Let's work it out. Let's just stay calm, Sephiroth. Let's just work it out. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm ready to go journeying again, man. Sephiroth. Long ago, disaster struck the planet. I'll just point out here that the word... I'm sure this was not intentional, but the word disaster means bad star. Dis meaning like bad, like you put dysphoria instead of uh, euphoria to mean like, you know, a state of anti-bliss, dis. Aster, as in like astro. Your ancestors escaped. They survived because they hid. So a disaster struck the planet. My ancestors were the one, the settlers that wanted to quit the mission, and they survived because they hid. The planet was saved by sacrificing the Cetra. After that, your ancestors continued to multiply. Oh, so the planet was saved by whatever disaster, because the Cetra, I'm assuming, sacrificed themselves to stop the disaster but 
the settlers, the ones who quit the journey, basically the lazy ones, the lesser ones, weren't sacrificed. They didn't sacrifice themselves because they quit the journey. They just hid like cowards. Now all that's left of the Cetras in these reports. What about uh, Eris? But I guess Clad didn't know Eris yet. And maybe neither did Sephiroth. What does that have to do with you? Don't you see? Yeah, I was gonna say. Se Sephiroth has laid it all out. Clad's not picking up on it. Sephiroth, basically, I'm assuming he's gonna take revenge for the Cetra. An ancient named Genova was found in a 2,000 year old geological stratum. Maybe, maybe Genova, maybe the reason why she was 2,000 years old and why she was preserved in the stratum has something to do with whatever disaster. And maybe Genova was one of the ones that helped prevent the disaster. The Genova Project. The Genova Project wanted to produce people with the powers of the ancients or the Cetra. I am what was produced. Yeah, he's the ultimate super soldier. He's the one that survived the experiments. P produced? Yes. So he's Genova's son in a way, but in a way, it's almost like he is Genova. Or at least he's of that, that same bloodline and that same intent. Professor Gast, leader of the Genova Project and genius scientist, produced me. So maybe Gast is who he considers his father. How? How did he... Sephiroth? He's almost like skipping along. Has he gone mad? Out of my way. I'm going to see my mother. Oh boy. Should go after him, but I want to fucking get back here and see if there's anything I can read. Ooh, yeah, this uh, seems kind of ominous. Soldier guy's not here anymore. I mean, I don't think there's any reason to check this, but I'm just kind of curious. I'm sure uh, Sephiroth is probably headed outside and back to the Mako reactor, presumably. Where else would Genova be? I don't even know. Or maybe in Midgar? Maybe that's where Genova is? Might as well check this all, though. No, no, no. Nobody else in the mansion? Oh my god. Holy fuck. Hey, is anybody here? Oh my god. The whole fucking town burnt down. And uh, I guess this is how Cloud's mom died. Sankin. Hey, it's you. You're still sane, right? Oh, <laughs> implying that the last person that came out of the mansion was not sane. Then come over here and help me. Cloud looking around. Can't believe his eyes. There's the other blue soldier. Fuck that. So even, like, the soldier got taken out. Sephiroth isn't even loyal to... Oh yeah, because Sephiroth isn't thinking along the lines of Shinra and non-Shinra now. Sephiroth is loyal to the Cetra now. I'll check this out. So you check that one over there. This is... Hey, um, am I gonna die? Sephiroth. Yeah, he's supposed to be his ally. Sephiroth. But this is, uh, my house, right? 
What a fucking thing is a 16 year old. Terrible. It's his mother's house. His mother was fine the other day. Last time she, he saw her. And it was his basically his hero and his big brother figure that did this. Sephiroth. This is too terrible. Sephiroth's just cutting people down. That noise, that's kind of like the, the sound that you hear when you're near something that's burning really intensely. Oh, man. Oh, and he is going up. He is going up to Mount Nibble. God damn. So now maybe we know. Assuming Cloud's memories are correct. He has been having some issues with his memories, but assuming his memories are correct, now maybe we know why he's uh, a little bit cold, a little bit distant. Oh, and here we are back at the memory. Papa. So Cloud isn't the only one that lost a parent today. Sephiroth? Oh, Sephiroth's sword is sitting right there. Did Sephiroth do this to you? Sephiroth, soldier, make a reactor, Shinra. I hate them all! Well, she takes the sword up. Thought nobody could use that other than Sephiroth. Can't even talk to uh, Tifa's dad. He's just dead. Here we are. Oh, that's where Genova is. That's right. Mother, I'm here to see you. Please, open this door. How would Genova open it? Is she alive? How could you do that to Papa and all the townspeople? God damn! Slashes her with the Massa Moon at level 50 right down the stairs. Tifa's just a 16 year old girl just learning some basic martial arts. God damn. You promised. You promised that you'd come when I was in trouble. Oh, that's interesting. Because Tifa asked me if I remembered the promise five years later from this. But we had already had this interaction. promised that you'd come when I was in trouble. And here I am, I came. Genova's huge and she has wings. Oh, is that from the machinery or is that her natural thing? Did the Cetra used to have wings or is that just part of the machinery that's connected to her? Mother, let's take the planet back together. I've thought of a great idea. Let's go to the promised land. So Sephiroth, in a way, He's like trying to like, trying to think wholesomely, like he just wants to get back to the original wholesome destined mission of the Cetra of traveling around the stars and getting to the promised land. But he's so mad at the fact that the, the one set of Cetra split off and that they survived and became dominant on the planet. Now he's been created by by these these humans that are the the cowardly Cetra that that settled and didn't even try and save the planet and abandoned their mission. These humans have recreated 
the Cetra. I guess not knowing about Eris and her bloodline. They recreated the Cetra, I guess, to... Who knows what? Probably try and get to the Promised Land for themselves. And Cetra is just, like, insane with anger about it. He's like, no. You were the cowards. We're the proper bloodline that never abandoned our mission. We will go to the Promised Land. And we will destroy all of you non-believers. Sephiroth. My family, my hometown. How could you do this to them? <laughs> They've come again, Mother. With her superior power, knowledge, and magic, Mother was destined to become the ruler of this planet. Yes, you, you can tell Sephiroth's lost the plot. They were never supposed to be the rulers of any planet. They were an itinerant spe species. They were supposed to go from place to place. Just because some of the Cetra did wrong and became these low, more lowly, cowardly humans that quit their mission, doesn't justify you also abandoning your mission to become, you know, essentially a murderer and try and rule over the planet like a despot. That was not your destiny, Sephiroth, but they. Those worthless creatures are stealing the planet from Mother. It's not your planet, buddy. It's not ours, but it's not yours either. But now I'm here with you, so don't worry. Fuck, she's huge. Whoa, she's partially electronic, too. It's probably like oil or something dripping out of her. Whatever they're powering those machines with. Oh shit, there's the real Genova there. What about my sadness? My family? Friends? The sadness of having my hometown taken away from me? It's the same as your sadness. Ha ha ha, my sadness? What do I have to be sad about? I am the chosen one. I have been chosen to be the leader of this planet. Yeah, he's, he's insane now. He's just so confused about his destiny, he's got all this power, he doesn't know what to do with it, and he sees the history and sees that part of his kind betrayed his mother. Now he's mad with power and he just wants to destroy and rule. I have orders to take the planet back from you stupid people for the Cetra. What should I be sad about? Who gave you those orders? You don't have those orders. You're you're implying that. That's just your that's just like your interpretation, man. Sephiroth, I trusted you. Yeah, I mean Cloud didn't know anything about this, Sephiroth. It's not his fault what his ancestors did. And maybe if you had gone about this in a different way. Cloud would have joined you, and you all could have gone together to face Shinra. Shinra representing the more evil side of humanity. And humanity, as the coward split off of Cetra, could have split off again, and the better part of humanity could have maybe rejoined the Cetra, or at least helped them get back on their mission. Cloud was innocent and pure of heart. He trusted you, Sephiroth. This makes me more interested to know, because I know the Final Fantasy um, remake series, I only played about 10 hours into number one, the, the first one. Makes me wonder if the, like if the new parts that they're adding to the plot, I know there's some parallel world bullshit, it would be hard for me to get through, but I wonder if it kind of tries to tell more of this story. Makes me curious. But yeah, this is this is a really cool story. I'm picking up on more of this than I ever did before. No, you're not the Sephiroth I used to know. 
Sephiroth used to be a hero. He used to look up to him. Okay, we're setting up the dichotomy here. Cloud versus Sephiroth. The Setra used to be the good ones, and the humans used to be the evil, cowardly ones, but now we've got the evil Setra who has fallen, and we've got the good human who wants to rise and be more wholesome and innocent. Wow, what a setup. What a fucking setup. So, even though we're out of Midgar, the story is still setting up. Maybe this is the end of the setup. Although I know more stuff gets revealed as... Now, this might be the end of the setup portion of the story, actually. Wait a damn minute. That's it? No more? I don't remember. Ah, uh, the memory issues. What happened to Sephiroth? In terms of skill, I couldn't have killed him. Official records state Sephiroth is dead. I read it in the newspaper. Shinra Inc. owns the newspapers, so you can't rely on that. I want to know the truth. I want to know what happened. Wow. So this is maybe why Sephiroth's been in Cloud's head in a way. Doesn't really say much about what's with Cloud's memories. Doesn't even necessarily explain why, why Sephiroth's in Cloud's head. But it explains why when they saved Eris at the top of Shinra Tower, and they found that Sephiroth had killed the president of Shinra, who they were kind of assuming to be their main villain at that time. Why Cloud wanted to now chase Sephiroth down. But it makes me wonder, why did Cloud join Avalanche? Did he think that would get him closer to finding Sephiroth, maybe? Was it partially because of wanting to come back and protect Tifa? I challenged Sephiroth and lived. Why didn't he kill me? Oh yeah, so they battled there. What happened? I don't remember. I'm alive too. So does Tifa not remember that? A lot of this doesn't make sense. What about Genova? It was in the Shinra building, right? Exactly, how did it get there? Shinra shipped it from Nibelheim to Midgar. Yeah, but what happened with Sephiroth? You would think Sephiroth would have taken it with him. Did someone carry it out later? It was missing from the Shinra building. Sephiroth? Right. Damn, none of this makes sense. I'm going, going, gone. And I'm leaving the thinking to you. <laughs> I'm going, going, gone, and I'm leaving the thinking to you. This is too much. Yo, Cloud, let's get a move on. Wait a sec. Cloud, what's wrong? You're just going to stand there while Sephiroth heads for the Promised Land? I ain't letting Sephiroth or Shinra get to no Promised Land. If they do, then we're all screwed. You know what I'm saying? Huh. I mean, I'm on board with Barrett. I'm not trying to be a dick to Barrett, but I, I just want to see if I can get more story. Is that all? Oh, brother. Fine, that's good enough. Oh, brother. Yeah, Cloud's being a little bit of a dick to Barrett. Barrett doesn't necessarily deserve that, but I just wanted to see if they would sit and discuss uh, more stuff. Cloud? How bad was I after Sephiroth stabbed me? I thought you were a goner. I was so sad. I, the Ancients, Cetra, Genova, Sephiroth, and myself. Yeah, so Eris is a Cetra. Makes you wonder why Sephiroth hasn't gone after her. Try and make her his ally. Let's go, Barrett's waiting. Yeah. What a fascinating story. Yeah, we come to find out Red 13 has got his own stories to tell too. Okay, my party's still set up right. Fucking right. Yo, Cloud, here. PHS. Oh, changing party members. Access the menu and select PHS. It can only be used on the world map or at a save point. That's the other functionality of the save point. It's for changing party members, I believe. PHS will put us in constant contact with each other. 
All right, then we're out of here. Hey, Barrett, d I I'm sorry to to uh, to kind of troll you there back there. Yeah, let's stay. Let's just finish this off. Do do do. Fifty-five minutes into this episode, episode seventeen, I haven't even explored around Calm yet. Um, listen to me. Just now, some guy in a black cloak walked east toward that grassy field. Oh, Sephiroth's heading east. He's got this killer sword and he looks real scary. Okay, um, I'm gonna end this episode here. I'm gonna save. Uh, I'm gonna have uh, some kind of lunch or something. Normally I don't even eat lunch, but I'm just really fucking hungry. Might have some couscous with some mustard and hot sauce. Drink some pop, maybe even eat a bag of chips. Watch some, uh... Watch some YouTube videos. So thanks for watching episode 17. Really appreciate it. Let me know what you think about this, uh... Very interesting and convoluted story. Um... Wow, yeah. Every time, somehow I catch new details. Like, I never really caught on to that whole story about... Like, the one species splitting off. Or I, I must have read it last time I played this game. I just didn't clue in to the significance of it. That that was kind of the inciting incident for Sephiroth. It's fucking crazy. Um, yeah, so let me know what you think. Drop a comment. Uh... If this happened to be your first episode for some reason, I've got the playlist of, uh, of the whole run-through. Obviously, I'll be finishing the game, but uh, I'll probably do some more episodes today. But anyway, yeah, uh, drop a like, drop a sub, hope your day's going well, and I'll see you in episode 18. Peace out.